Okay, for now, let's hide this tutorial. You came to my channel to watch this tutorial. Close. Okay, so let's rename our project up here. Game. We're calling it game. So right here, you'll see a cat on our screen. This cat right here is called a sprite. A sprite is something that we can move around in our game. You can see we also have a background. So I think we can choose a background for our game. Let's click on the stage and let's come over here to backdrops at the top. And this is where we can either draw our backdrop or select it. So if you want to draw it, you can use these wide range of tools like the brush, the eraser, the fill, the text, the line, the circle, the rectangle, that's all there is. Or you can come with me, click on choose a backdrop, and here you'll see all of the backgrounds that we can use. I, if I scroll down, I can find something that I like. Hmm, I'm going to go with farm. Okay, so now our cat is on a farm. Ooh, how fancy. Let's click on Sprite 1 over here. And since this cat is going to be our player, let's rename it over here. So instead of Sprite 1, let's type in player. Cool. So in a game, we have two things. We have a player and an enemy. And you'll see that every single game you play has that. So we have our player, but we don't have our enemy. How do we add it in? Let's go down here to choose a sprite and click on it. And here you'll see a wide range of things in the library. So you're going to choose something that you think is going to be the enemy for your game. Since a cat is the main player, I think the most obvious choice would be a mouse. Okay, so we have our mouse on the screen. So how do we make our game challenging? Well, I think we can make our mouse move back and forth across the screen and our cat has to get through the mouse to finish the game. So I want my cat to start here on the bottom of the screen and I want the mouse to be patrolling the top of the screen right here. And I'm dragging the sprites around to move them. <clears throat> okay, let's click on the events tab right here and let's drag out when green flag is clicked. So what we're going to do is snap together some blocks that make the mouse move back and forth. Let's click on the motion category and we're going to drag out this blue block, which is go to X and Y. We want our mouse to start off at the top left of the screen, move to the top right, and then keep on going back and forth. So you'll see here it says go to X and then Y. X is the horizontal position of the mouse and Y is the vertical. Let's type in minus 240 on the Y, on the X, and let's leave the Y at whatever it is right here. Now let's snap these two blocks together. So if we click the green flag right here, you'll see a mouse goes to the left of the screen. It's awesome, right? It's your first script with scratch, hopefully. Let's click on the control category and drag up forever. Now this looks like a C. Whatever block you put inside of this will run infinitely. Let's go to motion again, and we're going to drag out glide one seconds to X. And instead of minus 240, let's put in positive 240. That way the mouse should move to the right side of the screen. We want the mouse to move back. So let's right click on the block and let's press duplicate. I'm going to put this block below the first one. And instead of minus 240, let's put in, you guessed it, or probably not. You didn't guess it. I don't think so. I don't think you did guess it, did you? If you did so, leave a like on the video. Let's put in minus 240. Okay, let's press the green flag. So you'll see our mouse moving back and forth right there. He's going a little bit too fast. Let's stop the project. Instead of one seconds, let's put two. I'm going to change the seconds for both of them to two. So now we should take two seconds for the mouse to move to the right and two seconds for the mouse to move to the left. So we want to move our player, but how do we do that? Well, we click on the player sprite and here is where we're going to start adding some code. Let's go to events tab and let's drag out when space key pressed. Instead of space key, we want to move up if the up arrow is pressed. So let's find up arrow. Now, if the up arrow is pressed, we want to move up logically. This game is very logical. Since a cat is the let's go to motion and let's drag out change y by 10. 
As I said before, the Y controls the vertical position and the X controls the horizontal. So what if we want to move down? Well, let's right click, press duplicate, and change this to when down arrow pressed, then let's change Y by minus 10. And since we don't really need to move left and right, I think we can leave our game as is. But if you want to, we can right click, let's change this to right arrow, and instead of Y, let's use change X by 10. So I think you got the rest from here. If left arrow key pressed, change X by minus 10. But I won't need it. So let's press the green flag. We can move up and down. And let's try to avoid the mouse get to the top. No, I hit the mouse. Well, nothing happened for now, but we can code that in. Let me get to the top and nothing happens. How do we code the game to end the game if we get to the top? Well, let's do like so. Let's go to events. Let's drag out when green flag clicked. Let's go to emotion and let's drag out go to x, 0, and y, minus 150. When we start the game, we want the cat to stutter at the bottom. Now, let's click on control and let's drag out another forever loop. I hope you remembered what that does. Now we need to detect if the cat is at the top of the screen. And with that, we can use an if block. Let's go into the operators. And let's drag out this more than block. You'll see the arrow is facing to the bigger side of the arrow is facing towards the left. That's the one we need. Okay, I want you to take a quick look over here where it says Y and then it says this number right here, 170. It should be different for you. Let's put that in here. Let's put in 170. Let's go to the motion tab and let's drag out Y position. We got to the top of the screen. Now, what do we do? Let's go to Control and let's drag out stop all since we completed the game. Yay! And I almost forgot we need the cat to die if we touch the mouse. Now, that's a pretty simple thing to do. We can use the same code for this if y position is more than 170. Let's right click on the block, press duplicate. So what do we want to happen? Well, if we are touching the mouse, then we want the game to end. Let's go to the sensing category and let's drag out touching mouse pointer. Let's click the down arrow and let's choose mouse one, which is the mouse. So if we touch the mouse, let's press the green flag. Okay, you'll see the mouse is patrolling the sneaky little rat. I'm gonna wait for him to pass. I'm gonna get close and I'm gonna go up. <gasps> I made it. Cool. So that's it for this tutorial. If you want more detailed tutorial, make sure to check out other videos I've made, like how to make a platformer, how to make Flappy Bird, and all of that. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope to see you on your game creation journey.